Why do people love Shane Gillis so much that even other Asians are defending his past? Let's talk about it. Yeah, I mean, we already covered this one time, guys, but this keeps resurfacing. People keep sending this to us because it keeps like, just like dragging itself on. Mm. Andrew, uh, the M-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, which is a Asian media watchdog group, is demanding that Shane Gillis give a formal apology ahead of hosting SNL this weekend. Mm. And uh, the internet split. Of course, a lot of Asians support it. Some are in the middle. Some are against it. We're going to get into the thick of it. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Last Sauce at SmileLastSauce.com. It's sold out right now. Andrew, we already talked about it. Why does this keep going on? Because I think a lot of people think that Shane Gillis is saving comedy for comedy's sake. Because no, like comedy fans are yeah, saving. Yeah, comedy fans of all colors, even, uh, even Asians who like comedy, they're like, yo, Shane Gillis is one of the best comedians of recent. He pushes the boundaries. He's a friendly guy. He makes fun of himself. He's so, a fat, ugly dude. Yeah, so he's, let the, he's the opposite of Matt Reif, who's like... Got sorority girls yeah. like lining He's his even the body. opposite of Andrew Schultz or whatever. Like there's there's that whole thing. Right. And he doesn't try to be cool, <laughs> right? Right. But he's legitimately funny and he's a rising star. So let him do his thing. And he doesn't mean it in a malicious way. He made jokes. He addressed them before uh, on some platforms. So I guess a lot of Asians are just like, man, I don't want to be a snowflake. I don't want to be too sensitive about this. Just let Shane Gillis do his thing. I can understand that. Honestly, as yeah. a comedy fan, uh, by the way, being uh, doing comedic things on the internet is not my transcendent identity in my entire life. I got a couple other identities that I value above those, that one. Mm -hmm. But yes, from that perspective, could I see where they're coming from? However, Andrew, this is a advocacy group that is a nonprofit. Of course, the M-A-N-N-A and A-A, I'm sorry, should do their thing. Yeah. Yeah, Why that, would it have you? <clears throat> listen, if you're an Asian and you're like, dude, get this advocacy crew key group out of here. I identify as a comedy consumer. You never fought for Asians in your entire life on any sort of real level in a mixed context. Yeah. You have no idea what that means on any sort of real level. Right. You can acknowledge that Shane Gillis is hilarious and his comedy muscles are amazing and it's, it's great. He should continue to be a millionaire forever and yeah. ever as long no, as he he's should funny. Be. He should be. And still acknowledge that this advocacy group absolutely is well within its right to ask for an apology. No, that's like saying to me, the advocacy group is essentially like the police. And then Shane Gillis is like a known small time drug dealer. Like the, for example, the police are always going to check up on this drug dealer, whether or not they bust him and they're going to bust his balls and keep tabs on him because that's what the police are supposed to do. That's what the how that's how how the whole dynamic works, right? Now maybe I don't think Shane Gillis is a bad guy. I mean, ultimately, I think he is a comedian. He does push the limits. Apparently, he has used the N word in a jokingly way. I can't find a clip of it. So if anybody has the clip of it, let me know because I just I'm just curious to see it because previously I had been like, if oh. he uses it with the hard ER, he's not coming back from it. He's no, not but, coming but, back but from I'm it. Saying, like we said earlier, <laughs> people don't take. Things against Asians very seriously. A lot of people don't. Sometimes even Asians don't. Yeah, but I, ultimately, guys, I mean, I think that if you're an advocacy group that represents for people in Chinatown, which the joke was specifically about Chinese people in Chinatown, and it was a joke, but it was a harsh joke, I could see that being hurtful. So, of course, this group is doing what they're supposed to do. Ultimately, Listen, we're going to get into the comment section and we're going to talk about people disagreeing on this. And that's fine. You don't have to fully agree. But I would I you should probably agree on this. Podcasts are not the best platform to test super edgy jokes out on. Here's the thing. Podcasts are not necessarily, it's not a comedy setting necessarily. I know a lot of people joke around on podcasts and exercise things and go into characters. But I'm just letting you know that podcast kind of blur the lines between what is reality and joke. When you go on stage at a comedy club, those things are for sure jokes. So that's why I would have preferred the harshest jokes be set on stage in front of people's faces, to people's faces, so that people know you're joking versus on a podcast somewhere. That's my opinion. I mean, listen, if you use the worst racial slur for a group and 
the last five years, you're getting in trouble. Right, right, right. Um. Anyways. The truth is, a lot of Asians, they don't really know what it's like to fight for Asians in any sort of real way. They just sort of like live their life, mm-hmm. even if their life is super Asian. They just don't know what it's like to be a warrior on the battlefield in a lot of different contexts. They've never been... You know what I mean? At a high school that mirrored like whatever prison dynamics, whatever. Um, the truth is a lot of Asians, Andrew, they have identities that they've bought into that they feel like transcend their Asian identity, mm-hmm. right? So they're almost like more valuing their identity as like a fanboy of this thing over being Asian. And then they're leaving that comment from that perspective on the next chart page, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. it's sort of like causing a lot of uh arguing back and forth. And I really think that's the primary driver of it. Different people have lived different lives Mm -hmm. and seen really, really, really different reps. People view Asian hate differently. I think uh, most Asians were upset about it on some level at the peak of it. But obviously some Asians were getting boots on the ground and patrolling Chinatown and had their elder, you know, grandparents living in Chinatown. So they were fearing for their lives you know, at one point, and then there's so many Asians who are removed from it. So obviously there's a lot of Asians who are removed from the pain or the uh, ridiculing of being Asian or the targeting of being Asian. So there's a lot, everybody's on a different range. Asians are not a monolith. So you Asians who are getting But mad, Asians almost have the worst understanding of the variants. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, listen, it, it, like if you're an Asian that's not offended by Shane Gillis, that's fine. I'm not actually not disagreeing with you. But also, if you're an Asian who wants to fight against Shane Gillis and ask for an apology, you do your thing too. Yeah, right. Cook. By yeah. all means, like I'll that's- still watch Shane Gillis's clips because I do think he's funny. But I'm also not gonna like his special ride was for him. funny. His special <laughs> was really, really funny. But literally, if you go to ride for Shane Gillis over Asians and you're Asians, man, you gotta question some of the the choices in your life to be honest um somebody said you can make asian fun of asians because y'all are on the top you don't get to whine when you're winning it has a lot to do with like income numbers and stuff like that here's the thing though he was making fun of like poor asians in chinatown which is more riddled by poverty do you think people see that or is it like you know what i'm saying because like there was a lot of people in the comment sections they're not from chinatown but they're defending his joke about people calling people in Chinatown the C word. Yeah. So again, I mean, it's kind of goes back to like, what is he really making fun of? You know, he's not making fun of the model minority, Harvard from millionaire family, Asians. He's not making fun of this other type of Asian. He was making fun. You know what I mean? So I guess it's hard because there is so many Asians in poverty but then there are so many, the general narrative is that Asians are up. Right. And then, so you can't punch, you, you, you like punching up is okay. Well, it's confusing because it's like, let's say you're actually trying to punch somebody's face, but they have two faces. One's high and one's low. Right. So if you're punching down on the one face, it's like you're punching down technically. I don't know. It's All weird. right, Andrew, let's just get into the main argument. This guy said uh, his name is Yin of Ace. You guys act like a bunch of, Asian old heads haven't said something racist against other cultures. Am I the only one that isn't soft and doesn't care? This guy is from Omaha, Nebraska, and he does seem like he's bought in a little bit into the redneck lifestyle. Mm. But somebody else, and then a bunch of guys more from the city, and I think that are tatted up, got at him and been like, man, this guy's so soft. He thinks he's strong, and he'll let anybody just walk over us and laugh about it. Um, and it goes back and forth. This other guy said, I'm right there with you. He was just joking. This guy is also shotgunning beers and has an American flag on his truck. Mm. So it looks like the Asian guys that have more adopted into the truck Budweiser culture are more going with Shane's side. Some of the more street guys from the city going against it. Well, guess what? Asians have different perspectives, right? Right. Now, I guess, again, I think you would ask, not that it fully matters, but I guess it, it does in this context. Uh, who the people who care the most about Asians are probably going to feel more offended and demand an apology more so than the Asians who are just like, man, I'm just Asian, but I'm just trying to live. Right. Uh, it's almost like the people who are just trying to live and then give Shane Gillis a complete hundred out of a hundred pass. I can see what they're trying to do, Andrew. They want to live the best life for themselves. But these guys are also not fighting for Asians in a macro sense. I guess in a weird way, it just shows the the split and the diversity amongst Asians, David, that we have these different, that Asian guys 
Asian males primarily are argue about this because that's who they they would even care about Shane Gillis because they watch his comedy. Like Asian girls do like do not watch Shane Gillis, but Asian guys of different ends are arguing about how offended they should be about Shane Gillis. That's interesting. That's just interesting. Like, is like that not said, interesting? A, a lot of times, Andrew, Andrew, like you said, surprise, people have different perspective due to different life goals, different geographic location, different oh. upbringings, and just different, like, images that they see themselves yeah. with when they look in the mirror. Uh, someone said, uh, you know, you have freedom of speech in this country, but you're not free of consequence. He just is facing the consequences of what happened. So it makes it. No, that's a very matter of fact way of putting yeah. it, right? Like he has the, all the freedom to make all those jokes. He, you know, everybody thinks Asians are free game. There's some evidence to support that Asians were free game. He pushed it too far. Yeah. He got bit so, back. So I was watching that video where he goes off the racist jokes. There's still one clip on YouTube that shows it. And I was going on the comment section of the video and it said, bro, after watching several videos about him getting fired, I finally found this clip and I'm so pissed at how tame it is. Yes. And then someone goes, especially since they together have said way worse stuff. And so there's a lot of comments talking about how this clip from this podcast, this old podcast was not even the worst clip, but it's the clip that's saved. So I'm like, I'm kind of curious to see the other stuff. Oh, like, you're saying that apparently he there was way worse stuff that got deleted. Apparently he has said the N-word in a joking way, but there's no clip of it. And I'm like, whoa, how much harder did they go on this podcast? Right. <laughs> uh, Andrew, there was a bunch of white guys popping up in the next shark comment section saying comedy dies with woke. Long live Shane Mother effing Gillis. Uh, these were white guys that do not look that cool. Uh, I do think that that's a lot of his fans. Yeah, and like, I, think, I, I do yeah. think they're like some of them are... Possibly even autistic themselves. <laughs> I'm serious. Why, yeah. Why, why do you think that uh, Shane just got such a rabid fan base? I think he represents, like I said, the not the Matt Rifes, who are just like the hot frat guy, right? He's not the Andrew Schultz, which is like the super cool guy. He's literally like the schlubby dude at the town local bar, but way more accomplished, way quick, more prolific, way more, you know what I mean? Just a... Hyper elevated version. I'll, here, listen, guys. Shane Gillis fans, I'll, I'll give you one. I'll give you one that I can relate to you guys. At Jeremy Lin's peak during Lin Sanity, you couldn't tell me nothing about Jay Lin. There was a time I was riding with Jay Lin so hard, even when I knew that he kind of like couldn't go left that good with his left hand. Right, I would, right, you right. couldn't tell me nothing. Well, because he meant so much. Yeah, because I was just like, man, I just had never seen it. It meant so much to me. So you're saying Shane Gillis is the white Jeremy Lin of comedy. For these, <laughs> like, white outcasts or whatever, yeah, with this, like, sort of, like, I'm not the Schultz, Matt Reif perspective. Yes, I think so. Um, of course, some people are saying if you don't like him, just don't watch his specials. Uh, it goes back and forth. This guy's funny. Nah, he's good. Can other Asians say nah, he's good on behalf of all Asians? I hate, I hate this. I don't care what race you are. I hate it when Latinos do this. I hate it when any group does this. Asians do it. How can one person be like, nah, he's good in our book? It doesn't right. make any sense. Who is our book? Well, you can't speak for all Asians, I guess. Yeah. Right. Um, people are talking about Mark Wahlberg literally hospitalized an Asian guy. Now he's a spokesperson for Jesus. Oh, how come he did something way worse and people gave him the past? Here's the thing. This is what I'm trying to tell people. You can have opposing ideas in your mind. I always was a fan of the way Mark Wahlberg ran his Hollywood career. He, he kind of treated it like rap music. He brought his boys up, sort of like mm. LeBron in the sports world. I thought that was tight. I really enjoyed Entourage. I can say that by saying that young Mark Wahlberg was probably a racist a-hole. Yeah, right, I right. can hold those ideas simultaneously in my head. Yeah, and maybe he's changed. I mean, maybe he is a completely different person than he was when he was like 17, you know? I mean, that is fair to say, but also it's also fair to be like, yo, when you were 17, bro, he was a problem. Yeah, what? Why does it seem like it's so impossible for people to understand that Shane Gillis can be hilarious, incredibly talented as a pure comedian and been completely wrong for saying that stuff about Asians at the same time? Yeah, I think why people, is it, What? Is that, those yeah, are two incompatible? I, I you can't hold it? No, but I don't understand why it's not that different than people who commit crimes when they're younger or in their earlier years and then apologize and be like, you know what? You know, and they don't do it again. Right? Right. 
Yeah, it's just like that. Like he just like just because he's a comedian doesn't mean you can't commit violations. It was still a violation, like I said, and I think he should have lost his job at SNL at that time. But since then, that is fine that he has risen back up, got a fan base, and now SNL needs him. I think that's totally fine to acknowledge. Then that that is the arc of things, and you know, ultimately, it's not wrong. Right. Uh, ultimately, here's my takeaway, Andrew. There's a lot of people in the comments section who have, like, never really fought for Asians. Right. If you never really fought for Asians, like, at your school, me and you, we grew up in a very contentious environment mm. from elementary to middle school to high school. Sometimes it was more playful. Sometimes it got really crazy with the, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, we've even heard just racist things said in public and defended Asians on their behalf, you know? I'm not yeah. saying I fought 10 guys, but I'm just saying... We've been in verbal spats defending Asians in public. Right. By the way, I'm not saying Asians are in the right 100 out of 100 times. We can be wrong, too. This particular time, I'm not going to tell the advocacy group to back off when they're doing their job defending Asians. Yeah. yeah. What, what I personally think that this is like, if they had limited political willpower and only one or two bullets to spend it on, would I spend it on this one or two? I'd have to take a look at what else, what, what were the other options in the field, but... <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, it's in the it's in the middle zone. You know, it's right there. It's it's a way to get their name out too. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? I'm never gonna go against Asians defending Asians, whether right. I fully agree with it to the same extent that they do. Or you not. know what it is? A lot of Asian, some of the Asians who are going against other Asians for being offended, they feel like it makes Asians look weak, and they want that validation too. So there's two reasons. One, they don't want to be a snowflake, which I can understand that, right? You don't want to be seen as overly sensitive. But then there's this other side that I don't understand where the Asians are like, dude, like they almost are defending Shane Gillis because in a weird way, they like want his validation. Right. And because they, they relate to his archetype, right? Yeah. And they think it's whack or uncool in America to stand up for Asians. Right, because they must have some perception, maybe possibly driven by their own experiences in their life, that Asians don't struggle or that Asians are not going through anything. Yeah, and they want that validation from other people. Yeah. And they feel like that if they voice their opinion and they defend Asians, then they lose validation in their American no, they'll, way. They'll get kicked out of the, the dogs. Yeah. They can't be part of the yeah. dogs anymore. Yeah. Yeah, listen, guys, man, every Asian has a different perspective, but some perspectives are more valid than others because you've seen more reps, you've been through more things. Other people who just, you lived a quiet life of consumption somewhere in the middle of nowhere, never really stood up for anything. You can have your opinion by all means, but I count it less. Or maybe in their defense, I don't know any guys out there, maybe they've physically fought people in defending Asians but then when it comes to comedy, they're like, I don't care, man. People can yeah, say whatever they want. That could be a valid That's perspective, too. too. Hey, man, we tell Asians across the board, I'm not just going to be like a media guy. I'm telling Asians to defend themselves in IRL in their house, too. So as long as you got a reason on why you feel that way, you let us know in the comments down below. Are you defending Shane Gillis? Are you defending comedy? Or yeah. are you defending this watchdog group and that Shane Gillis should apologize? Either way you feel is valid, but... Why don't you let us know in the Have comments down below Have a good rationale. Why. Have a good rationale. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.